کنفرانس در واشنگتن تهدید فزاینده رژیم ایران گزینه های سیاست برای ایالات متحده مسئولیت آمریکا و ملل متحد در حفاظت و تضمین حقوق ساکنان اشرف 25 فوریه 2012 شش اسفند 1390 ریچارد دیلی شهردار شیکاگو به مدت 22 سال عالی ترین مدیر شهری ایالات متحده 2005 مدیر کنفرانس شهرداران آمریکا 1996 سفیر فلیپ لادر سفیر آمریکا در انگلستان 1997 2001 معاون رئیس دفتر رئیس جمهور بیل کلینتون عضو هیئت مدیره صلیب سرخ آمریکا رودی جولیانی هوارد دین تام ریچ پروفسور آلن درشویتس گلن کارل معاون پیشین اطلاعات مرکزی آمریکا آوی جوریش مشاور پیشین وزارت دارایی آمریکا و تام تانکردو Iran broke off talks regarding its nuclear development program. Western leaders roundly criticized the decision and calls for an even tougher economic sanction, uh, sanctions became louder. As the eyes of the world are focused on this dangerous diplomatic tug of war, a quieter but deadly kabuki dance is being performed in the deserts of eastern Iraq and in Baghdad. A human tragedy involving thousands of people is developing in the Middle East, but with much less attention being paid to it by the rest of the world. Of course, I'm referring to the people of Ashraf and those now held in what has become the ironically named Camp Liberty. These people have been the most consistent and effective opponents of the terrorist regime in Tehran. In another ironic twist, the MEK has been branded with the term terrorist by our own State Department. This is a situation that puts their very existence in jeopardy, as they are now at the mercy of the government of Iraq, a government that has become a co-conspirator with Iran in the persecution of the men, women, and children in Ashraf. There are now 400 people from Ashraf who have been moved into a tiny, filthy part of Camp Liberty with the promise that their internment would be brief and in a place that provided basic amenities. In fact, conditions there are disgusting, as you will see. And the people there not only must exist in the most vile of surroundings, but they must do so under the constant surveillance of armed Iraqi guards. What was supposed to be a safe haven has turned into a nightmare. So we are gathered here today to change that exists possible for world leaders to use the excuse of ignorance in order to absolve themselves of the responsibility for this situation. The first of our distinguished panelists to address the situation is Professor Alan Dershowitz. Uh, although, although he needs, although he, he probably needs no greater introduction than that, I do have a short one that I have to provide. In 1983, the Anti-Defamation League of the B'nai B'rith presented Mr. Dershowitz with the William O. Douglas First Amendment Award for a compassionate, eloquent leadership and persistent advocacy in the struggle for civil and human rights. In that capacity, he's going to be with us today. In presenting the award, Nobel laureate Elie Wiesel said, 
If there had been a, a few people like Alan Dershowitz during the 1930s and 40s, the history of European Jewry might have been different. Thank you. Thank you. I look at our brilliant panel and I wonder what Rudy Giuliani would have done if somebody had tried to file a stock offering which showed Camp Liberty in the way it was originally shown when the reality is what we've seen. They'd be in jail so fast for stock fraud, for violating the expectations of people. This is a scandal. This is a fraud. A fraud not involving money, but a fraud involving threats to human life. What we need immediately is a commission of inquiry to determine how this fraud was perpetrated. Who <laughs> certified? Who approved that hellhole, that garbage dump? Who said that it met United Nations standards? Somebody is responsible for perpetrating that fraud and for getting 400 innocent people to risk their lives and their health to be exposed to that kind of trash and that kind of hazard to their health. We have to get to the bottom of this. And in my view, I'm not making these decisions, but I don't believe that anybody should be required to live under those circumstances. And unless and until the 400 that are there are moved to safe places out of Iraq where nobody can trust the Iraqi government to protect them and into safe havens no one else should be required to move from the safety and beauty self-made beautifully built residences and schools and athletic facilities and other facilities at Camp Ashraf to this horrible horrible place look if it's truly a transit camp if it truly is designed to keep people for a couple of days until they are moved to safer places, one could understand, perhaps even justify that. But if this is to be a place where people are expected to live, my God, what kind of humanity would compel people who are protected individuals under the United Nations, to whom the United States made a sacred promise 